face of technology right now is really evolving in an exponential rate. And we've seen a lot of industries that has been disrupted. And I know you guys are very familiar with some of them. Like with the hotel industry, we've seen Airbnb, wherein any people could now actually become a hotel, right? With transportation, we've actually seen Uber, right? They actually disrupted the taxi industry. And in Asia, we have Grab Taxi or Grab, right? And today, with regards to innovation, we're now seeing with technologies like this. Walmart before was actually like super big, but now there's Amazon, wherein I could shop. With the advancement of artificial intelligence, hopefully you guys are very familiar with these kinds of things already because it's happening right now, right? With self-driving cars, which I don't know if it's gonna work with EDSA, with mix or virtual or augmented reality, and lastly, bio and nanotechnology, right? Imagine right now with regards to life science, we have CRISPR. We're in using CRISPR, you could actually edit the genes or the DNAs of people. Or one day in the future, actually right now, it's happening, you could actually put nanobots in your body because with the advancement of artificial intelligence, people need to cope up with this skill sets that is being needed in the industry. So what do we do? We just upgrade ourselves. So those are crazy ideas, I know. But in reality, a lot of things has changed except education. During the 1930s, this is the way how we learn. Today, still the same. Agree? During the 1930s again, this is the way how they registered at the school. Today, I think it's got worse. This is one school. I know some of you are familiar with it. Some students need to sleep there to register for their classes, right? Are you familiar with this kind of kid we're in? A lot of kids right now know how to use like three-year-old or four-year-old kid who knows how to use an iPod or an iPhone without teaching them how to use it. You've seen that, right? These kids are so techy, but when they go to the school, it's like the Flintstones or the Jurassic World. And let's be honest, that's happening. And do you know the reason why is it like that? Because of these two words. Because of bahala na, or okay na yan. Or it's working, why should I change? It's been there for like the last 50 years, so I don't need to change. Similar to the taxi or the transportation industry, to the hotel industry, to the health industry, education has the same problem. And I realized that because of these two things, the impact to the students is this. Bawal tumawid, pero may tumatawid pa rin. Kasi, okay lang yan. They've seen that in their school. Don't drink while driving. Okay lang yan. Right? And traffic sa EDSA, why are we not solving that? Okay lang yan, it's been like that for the last 20 years or 10 years. That's the reason why we've seen that this is the root cause of all the problems that we have today. Because education is not adapting to these kinds of changes. That's why our vision is that we believe that the best way to change the future of this country is actually by disrupting education, right? And our mission is actually to empower education by providing disruptive solutions. So we're building products in education and we're helping schools to actually adapt to these kinds of changes because there's no one doing it. So to share you our story, I was like that kid with the iPod. But of course, when I was a kid, we don't have that. I'm using a big, big CRT computer and you know what I did? I destroyed that computer, opened it, and tried to look on how it actually worked. And when I was exposed during that time, I was really amazed on like, how these computers were built. And I told myself one day, I'm going to build my own computer and build my own games. And I've seen the story of like, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, and Larry Page, and I asked myself, why is it that there's no tech company in the Philippines? 
Why is it that these all tech billionaires or tech giants was born and raised in the US, not in the Philippines? So that was the big question. So I told myself, one day, I'm going to build a technology company from the Philippines that is going to be bigger than Apple. And I'm going to name it Orange Apps. If there's an Apple company in the US, there should be an Orange company in the Philippines. That was just the main idea of our name. And my classmates were just laughing at me during that time. But I told myself, one day I'm going to do it. I'm going to find a way to make it possible. So when I entered in college, like I studied in PUP, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, and I have this problem. We're in, actually I'm there. There, so I'm there. So I'm actually falling in line for like three to four hours just to register to my class, and another few hours just to pay for a school fee. Wherein when I came to the cashier, it's offline. So technically, I need to go home and go back again to the school to redo everything again. And I hate that process. Every semester, we do that. And most of the time, we don't have teachers. And if, in short, if you don't have teachers, there's no way for us to learn, right? And with regards to updates or news, I don't know what's happening to the school. There's no way for me to get those information. So you know what I did? Because I'm a programmer, so I hacked the software of the school. So I hacked the software of the school. I created my own mobile app. We're in using your phone. You can now get updates from the school. I could enroll to the school much, much faster. And when I launch it, like the students love it and the school love it. And I realized maybe I could actually sell it to different schools as well. But the problem was, I don't know how to do like business stuff because I'm a programmer. So this is the app that I've made in PUP, right? So we created a mobile app for PUP, and then I realized maybe I could sell it to different schools. So when I created that, we were featured at TV5. Um, someone interviewed us, and then suddenly I got a call from uh, Chot Reyes, and I actually presented to him and I told him, I'm Gina Bellona, I'm 19 years old, and I'm the CEO of Orange Apps, and this is my vision. And he told me, is your company registered at SEC? I said, what's SEC? And then he asked me, like, do you have company papers, like BIR or like, the mga tax forms? I told him, I don't know those stuff, but I, all I know is that I have a product and I could sell it. So then he told me, okay, I'm gonna help you, but in exchange, I need to be a shareholder. So I said, yes even though I don't really understand what a shareholder means. But because of that, it gave me the opportunity to start my dream, which is Orange Apps. Technically, I'm not a business guy. I haven't finished college, actually. I don't have an MBA degree, but all I do is read books. I read three books per month. I ask questions. I attend these kind of events for me to learn. So that's actually my MBA in real life. So I made a lot of mistakes in terms of hiring, in terms of management, in terms of sales, in terms of building products. But because of those failures, I actually learned a lot of things. Again, if it captures your imagination, it will captivate others. That's what Starbucks CEO said. And when I was starting like 20 years old, it was really difficult for me to find talent or to find people who will join me. Like, who would join a 20-year-old CEO who doesn't have any background, doesn't have any connections, or doesn't have any idea what's going to happen? So we started the company in my house. Right? That's JJ. He's my co-founder. He graduated multimedia arts at Lyceum, but he's handling our operations, like HR stuff and legal stuff. Right? And now we have our own space. Um, it, we call it the hacker house because some of our developers live there. And I've seen the presentation of NUWorks and I really admire your story and I really admire your space. And we want to build something like that in the Philippines. So we offer free food, they could play, they could do whatever they want. We have a different culture as well. And from two people in my house, we have like 20 plus people in the company. And I would like to share a crazy story here. This kid is from Tacloban. And you're familiar with the typhoon Yolanda. He was a victim of that. And when he went to Manila for an interview, he actually showed me an app that he made. Wherein, using that app, the teachers doesn't need to get an attendance anymore. And he showed me using a phone. The phone was actually, doesn't have any Wi-Fi. 
because it's actually broken, so he, use, he just used Bluetooth. So the teacher will automatically get like, all the students inside, inside the classroom using that. And he was telling me the story that he actually used to work in a palenque. And uh, he's also a pedicab driver before. And because of when he heard about our story, he got this hope we're in. Now the Philippines could have a tech company, and he wants to be part of it. Another story is this kid. This kid is 17 years old. He actually didn't get the chance to pursue his senior high because of financial problems. And he messaged me on Facebook because he told me um, there's a huge problem with, their, with his school. He doesn't like, know stuff like the, all the teaching that's, that the school is actually being taught right now. It's, there's a huge gap. And he wants to learn how to code. So he went to Manila and then we actually taught him. So when you go to our website, he's the guy who created that. And this guy, John Ignacio, he's actually an educator. He's from New York. He worked for Google. He worked for the Google Glass team before. And I've met him and I told him like what we're trying to do. And you know what? He's crazy. He actually quit Google and is now working for us. And we're looking for more people like him later. <laughs> so all of them are students like me before and all of them have the same problem. So what we did was I got them and asked for their help to actually solve this problem. Actually, what we thought was the problem is really like a lot of schools has their own existing software, but the problem is it's very, very old school, like this traditional school. Like this school got a problem, the same problem that we have, and they wanted to solve that. And they bought it for like 750 million pesos, and this is what it looks like. Right? And you know what happened when they launched it? When they launched it, it crashed. And this was the effect. And we look at the other schools again, and we've seen softwares like this. We're in our 17-year-old hack this software and got access to these kinds of things. And once actually we put or paste like SQL injections, we could destroy their database. And this software, worth billions of pesos as well. Another software, look at the design. And all of this software is stored on a server, right? And when the school got burned, what will happen? Technically, it will be destroyed. What if the software hackers will actually hack that? It will be destroyed again. So we asked ourselves, why is it like that? So we told ourselves, okay, we're gonna build a platform wherein it's just like Facebook, you just get a sign up to us, and your school will have a software right away. You don't need to worry about maintenance, software updates, hiring more people to maintain your software. Just subscribe to us and you'll have it right away. So that's what we did. So instead of you worrying about those things, don't worry about that, we'll take care of it. So this is what it looks like. The school will have their own mobile app. Using their phones, they could do everything that they want as a student. So this is one of our school, Paref, Southridge. Using the phone, they'll have a newsfeed, similar to Facebook, right? The design is very easy to understand. Why? Because we don't want you to study how to use it anymore. There's gonna be like tuition fee, I could pay anywhere, online, or BDO, BPA, Byte Center, LBC. I don't need to go to the school for, to enroll, technically. I have messages, so I'll be updated right away. We do online assessments. It looks like Facebook, right? Uh, we could study online. We could actually answer homeworks and activities. You'll get a score right away, so the teachers doesn't need to check papers anymore. And for the teacher side, they'll get analytics, wherein they could now analyze, wherein, say, out of 10 questions, why is it that all the students is wrong at question number four? Is it the teacher's fault or the student's fault? Technically, it's the teacher's fault, right? So now they'll understand and they'll adapt, they'll adjust. For the school, using the platform, even though they like 70,000 students, they could analyze all this information, like how many students are there, how many men are female, how many dropout rates, so all of this information will be given to them on their fingertips. So this is the effect of our platform to the schools that we have. So before, I know a lot of schools still have like the bulletin boards, but now they don't need that anymore. And then with the papers, there's actually, they're actually now saving a lot of money in terms of printing, in terms of paper, in terms of manpower, in terms of electricity because of us, right? Now let's talk about the future. 
what we're doing right now is we're like planting seeds to the school. But if we're gonna look at the bigger picture, we have all the information since you were like grade one until you graduate, right? What if we could actually use that to actually help you as a student, as a school, or as a teacher? What if our software could actually analyze you based on your data? What if we, we could actually adapt or the teacher will adapt the way you actually learn? What if we, if we could actually predict what kind of career or what kind of job you could actually use? This is a big problem with the millennials. We don't know what we want, right? That's why we're jumping to different companies. And the best part, what if the software could actually give you advice, right? So that's what we're actually looking at. I'll give an example. Let's say this guy, a maritime student. What if we could actually match this kid to other companies that's actually looking for a specific skill set or specific information, right? So this is actually one of the things that we're looking at. Now, there's a next big problem that we're facing, that we're gonna face, actually. And according to the CEO of McDonald's, what if in the future, or now actually, it's actually cheaper to buy a 35,000 robotic arm that is, than it is to hire an employee who's inefficient making $15 an hour bagging french fries, right? So we're actually facing a big threat in the next coming years, like one year or two years. And I believe the way for us to solve this problem, again, is in education. Everything boils down to education. That's why, again, our mission is that we believe that the best way to change the future of this country or to prepare the future of this country is by disrupting education. So, again, thank you so much for the opportunity to share what we're doing. And we're actually looking for crazy people like you guys. So we're hiring. If you're interested, please talk to me. Thank you so much.